With three, four families stationed at Cape Otway for most of its working life, life and death has always paid a part of the station. In terms of deaths, we have deaths of keepers, visitors, shipwreck sailors, and perhaps most importantly in the 19th century, children dying here, both for the keepers' families and across at the Telegraph Station. The rate the children are dying, it's no greater than, say, elsewhere in Australia for the same time period, but perhaps we felt it more here. You've got a small community, three, four families stationed here. 800 metres further along the Great Ocean Road walk, you have Cape Otway Cemetery. It's used as cemetery for the families here, settlers and shipwrecked sailors. We know from our own records there's more people buried in that cemetery we have grave markers for. In terms of the keepers, one of the most tragic cases is that of Thomas. Thomas John Porteous, described as a jolly fellow, always fun of making a joke. He arrives here as an assistant keeper in 1897 and arrives back here in 1914 as the head keeper here. In October 1915, he decides one afternoon to go fishing down on the cliffs below the lighthouse with his son Frank. They leave about 3.30 in the afternoon and have a great afternoon together fishing below the lighthouse. But then he realises that it's getting a bit late. He's going to be late for work. So he starts hurrying up the cliffs. A couple of times along the pathway, he has to stop, he's out of breath. But he does make it back here, behind me, to the head keeper's quarters. He's met by his wife, Grace, who asks him if he wants anything to eat. He replies, no, it's getting late. I need to change into my uniform and disappears into one of the rooms. 10 minutes later, Grace realizes he hasn't re-emerged. She goes into the room to find him collapsed. She then runs across to the assistant keeper's quarters and the cafe and raises the alarm. The assistant keeper, Dunk, rushes back to the head keeper's quarters and tries to revive Thomas with brandy, but he's dead. They have an inquest the following day. The official verdict of that inquest is heart attack brought about by overexertion hurrying up the cliffs. Thomas, in fact, isn't buried here at Cape Otway, he's buried in Melbourne.